Scary Story Planet. So, when I was doing my initial research about you, I'm, I also found out that you've had quite a few books read on CBeebies, bedtime mm. stories. That's true. How does that come about for an author, and, and uh, do, do you like it? Was it a good experience? Uh, well, again, it, it's, it's something that happens without an author doing anything at all. It's, okay. I think it's all part of the... I, I'm not quite sure who negotiates it, whether it's the publisher. I suspect it's the publisher. Depends on your deal when you sell your... You, know, you may sure. sell these rights, but not these rights, or whatever. So, uh, I think it was publisher, and... It's great because, yeah, quite apart from anything else, it, well, obviously it's publicity, but it's, you know, it's very exciting seeing, you know, Hugh Bonneville read your story or whoever. I mean, I had my... my there is a similarity between the two of you. <laughs> Did you do it and pretend to be him? That would be lovely. Yes, definitely. Yes, no, I'd certainly like his money. So if, you look, if you're watching Hugh. Um, so, uh, yeah, there was a bit, so we did a bit of... This is a bit of that. Um, my, yes, my, my space story, Mungo and the P Spiders from Space, was read by... Dennis Lawson, mm -hmm. and if you're a Star Wars fan, as I am, you know that Dennis Lawson played Wedge and Tilly's in the in the original Star Wars trilogy. There you so, go, the trivia. There we are. So the idea of my it's like my book being read by somebody from Star Wars that was very exciting indeed. So that Were kind you of thing. there for the filming? Nope, okay. not at all. No, Could no, no. you be if you wanted to be? I don't know. Actually, they used to, they used to sort of tell me it had happened after it had happened, but then so I don't know. I don't know. I think again you'd have to. Get onto your agent or your publisher and say, if this happens, I would like this to be done. Mm. Um, but I actually haven't had one for a long time, so it's high time. Um, CBBs, CBBs. You know, time to invite me back. Do you yeah. feel, though, um, as an author, when that yeah. happens, you feel you've made it as an author if it's broadcast in that way? Or I don't know what. I, I don't even it. know what the question no, no, means. No, no, myself. no, no, no. Yeah. It's a very good question. No, it is a very good question because what does it mean? It's sort of. I, I don't know that. Oh, I don't know. You'll have to ask lots of other authors. I don't know that anybody thinks they've made it. I mean, unless, I mean, I dare say J.K. Rowling is, you know. I think she's made she's it. She's made yeah. it, yes. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Generally speaking, I don't know. I don't think the moment ever goes away where you think that they, you know, they're going to come into your house and break your pencils and say you can't do this anymore because you're oh. not very good. You know, we found you out. Um, I think, guess it, if you've made it, it, feel, it probably feels like you know. Actually, I'm supposed to be doing this. I don't know. I think maybe it's a retrospective thing. Maybe you, you do feel <coughs> a little bit more at home. You kind of think, well, yeah, well, this, this is what I do now, and mm -hmm. so you do get a bit more comfortable in it. But it's not like a kind of. You know, you sort of wander around the, the neighbourhood shouting at everybody, you know. I'm a children's author! I want respect! I might like have done that. I'm not well, the respect I mean, you know, I'm not saying we don't. I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, we, obviously we all do. We all do that sort of thing. No, so, uh, yeah, I don't think that a moment you suddenly wake up one morning and think, my goodness me, I've made it. I think perhaps <clears> you <throat> just sort of get a bit more relaxed about the whole thing. That's yeah. probably it. And a bit, so, so instead of it being, oh my goodness me, my, I saw my book in the bookshop, which... Is goodness knows still rare enough. Um, I can't wait for that yeah. moment. To oh, happen. it's it is very exciting, but mm. but then, um, you know, point comes when you're saying, why isn't my book in the bookshop? You know, it's the other way around. You sort of you, you do shift the other the other way of thinking about things. I think, um, but that's about it. I don't I don't know. There's there's no special moment. I think well, not so far. When a book goes out of print, how do, how does that make you feel as an author? If you've made money on it, are you at peace? Or is it like, oh, why is it not selling? Depends. There are some books. I mean, obviously, I've had books that go out of print, and I've had books that, have, well, um, there are a few that we're trying to get back into print. There are three books Amazing. that have gone out of print. No, four books have gone out of print. No. Mm. No, yes, four books have gone out of print. That's four. That's four, yes. I'm just trying to think. Um, and the first thing. Three had a very good life and they were in print for a long, long time. But I still think it's a shame that they went out of print. I still think they have a life. They, they, you know, I think it's partly when you do school visits and you think, oh, I can't read that anymore because the kids can't buy it. You know, they could probably ah. find it in the library, but you know, it it, 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 it it feels almost like you can't read it anymore, and that's that's upsetting. And yes, I, I only feel that. that about four books. Um, and um, what can I say? We are in talks, discussions, hopefully, yeah. to bring them back. One of the resurrect. Books, yes, indeed. One of the books sort of never found an audience at all, and I, and, and, it's, and it's sort of like a cult movie, you know, people forever coming up to you and saying, with great vehemence, I love that book, but Amazing. this is the book that never sold, so, you know, where were you in 2000, whenever? Buying it off the shelf. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. so... Or um, well, maybe they were they, the only person that purchased it. They did, it. I'm sure they did, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... So yes, I think I think there. Is, so there are two categories. Basically, there's a category <clears throat> book where yes, you had your time and that's it and that's good. And there are other ones where you 
either you're invested in it more or you, you there's something about it you think deserves a longer life. So yeah, it's yeah, two yeah, different yeah. things. Money wise, I mean, if I get paid my I get paid my advance and I, it is my hope to earn it out and earn a little bit more mm-hmm. and you know, and anything above that is um is you know pin money, as they it, used to yes, say in, exactly. those, in the olden days. Yes. I've uh, my favourite is to dance a lot. Well, thank you very much. I, no, I, very think, I think it's very funky. Thank well, it you. Is, well, it is. It is, it is quite it literally is. funky. It is. It is funkadelic. Do you have a favourite? Do I have a favourite? Uh, actually, that's another question I often get asked in schools. And What's I, your favourite? Well, exactly. And I often say, think, well, actually, no. I, I, I used to say, well, it's like having a favourite child. And you don't do that, do you? And then they looked at me as if obviously clearly they knew their parents did have a favourite child and it wasn't them. Oh, so, yeah, so, you wanna, so, yes. Don't wanna, so, actually, what I say now is my favourite book is the next one. So my favourite book is the one I haven't written yet because <clears> that's the one I want to write because I want to find out what it's about and who knows it might be the best book ever written by any human being. Mm. So that's the thing that keeps you writing is is wanting to know what the next one is. So I think that's the best way of answering that question. I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm every time I do an interview I, mm. I, I take little bits of in, um, good. advice well, from people. So I, I take think that is a very honestly. good answer. Yeah. Well, that's very kind of you. Yeah, but yeah, it Bless works you. for me. Works, and it does feel, it feels right. It feels like, you know, it's not like you finished that book and you, you, it's, it's that you're f- forever going forward and you're forever looking for the next Always one. Always writing new stuff. Yes. I mean, I, I brought my laptop here today because I've in got case. a few going no, on Good, at the moment. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always get slightly worried, though, once I've written something and mm. then send it to my agent mm. if she doesn't think that it's as good as I thought it. I mean, have you battled with your agent if she hasn't Sometimes, agreed? Sometimes, but I haven't, I don't know that I've ever battled. Not battled, that's, no, that's no, strong, no, no, but I know it? what you mean, I know what you mean. No, no, the, I, I don't think I've ever, I mean, if, if my agent has said, oh, I'm not sure this is all that good, um, I, I bow to her greater knowledge. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, I, oh, I have so far, maybe the, what the day will come when I've written one, I think, oh, oh, oh no, no, no. Lady, get it out. Yes, <laughs> exactly, but generally speaking, uh, She's usually well. No, she's always been right. So, yep. so it's it's always been a thing where I thought, I well, agree. maybe I can sneak this under the wire rather than a, this is my passion project and it must be done. Yeah, no, I I always listen to my agent, and um, she has a very polite and um, maybe that's one for the bottom drawer. <laughs> yes. like, okay, fair that's enough. That's always good. Yeah, absolutely. So once you have an agent, they obviously try and sell to yeah. different publishing houses. Yeah. What has been the quickest and the longest time that that has happened in for you? Oh my goodness! Well, for me, between me writing something and it being picked up. Yeah. Um, oh gosh. Well, there are some that get bought. But well, I, I mean, the, the fastest probably was. Uh, it's difficult to know really because because now often I will sort of develop stuff with publishers, so they'll come to me and they'll say, "Look, here's a picture. Can you think of a story to go oh, with that's it?" That's amazing. At which point you're sort of there from the beginning. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one took. No time at all to sell, and then I think it took two and a half years to come out because it was the because it was it was with Puffin and Puffin in those days, and probably still it was a huge sort of conglomerate kind of thing, mm. and they had certain public uh, publication schedules, and you had to slot your book in, but then it first had to go to either Frankfurt or Bologna, and it had to be illustrated, and they had to sort of you know edit the book. So so what was one thing another that took about two and a half years to come out. There is there are a couple that were sort of bought by one publisher and then <clears throat> usually what happens is that your publishers move around a lot and okay. often yes. the publisher who really loved that book then goes on holiday, you know, on maternity leave or goes to, goes to another publisher or something and, and it's left there and the new person who comes in hates its guts or just, it just oh, doesn't work for them. Definitely. And that's fair enough but it, because it's all about, you do want somebody who really is passionate about your book mm. to push it forward because there are so many other books. So when that happens, uh, often they will just sell it back to you or they give it back to you. Um, and, and because I like the idea of selling it. That's even better, isn't it? Yeah. Because they've already paid you for it. Yes. Uh, so no, no, but they probably, because it's the change of heart has come at their end, they don't give you the money back. because They don't ask you to give them the money back because it's their mistake, not yours. So then you can take it and give it to someone else. And there is a book that I wrote, God knows how long ago, which is even as we speak, possibly about finally to be... Um, illustrated, having been having gone all around the houses and you know been taken up at least by two publishers, so oh, wow. yeah, so it can take it sometimes it can take forever, which is why I have to keep writing stories because you can't wait for that one to no, work its absolutely. way through the machine. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I think that is a piece of solid advice as well. Just keep going. Don't wait oh, if you're yes. oh, submitting. Yeah. Oh, Just no, no, keep absolutely. Going, keep, going. keep going. Always, always, always. Yes. Several fingers in pies of different stories. It's mm. really nice if you've got sort of one book coming out, another book sort of being illustrated, another one on your desk, and another one in your head. You know, so that you've got something in each of the different mm. bits of the, yeah. the machine. The cycle. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I agree. So, who are some of your picture book idols? Nice. Oh my goodness! You get inspired by. Uh, well, as I say, Morris Sendak, I think, yeah, was really. my number one guy just because he was. And I, I, idols, I mean, that it's probably only going to be the people who are doing picture books when I was little. And that wasn't very many. There just weren't that many people. Um, so, yeah, so definitely Morris Sendak. There's something amazing about the world, especially <coughs> of, of um, Max and uh, where the wild things are. Uh, love it. Yeah. Um, uh, LJ, Tintin. And wow, uh, yes. Goshini and Udazo, um, uh, Asterix. Yep, yep. Um, but actually, I, I, you know, it illustrates like Edward Ardizoni and Ronald Searle and Quentin Blake and all those people. I mean, mm. I do, I was very conscious of growing up in that, in a sort of illustrated world. You know, yeah. I was very conscious of there being pictures all around and um, all that sort of thing. I, I remember. They, they, at some point on Jack and Ori, I remember Quentin Blake telling a whole story on a sort of, it was like a huge bit of lavatory paper. It wasn't lavatory. Oh. You know, it, but he would write, he wrote a whole story and as he went along, he pulled the thing along and he, he would sort of, he would tell you the story oh. while drawing it and somehow it all managed to fit into the 10 minutes of Jack and Ori. That's I, amazing. Jack and Ori lasted. So I remember, so I remember all of that. Um... And that, you know, that sort of thing, the idea of pictures coming to life, the idea, you know, with, without being animated, it's almost like they're just by being drawn, you're giving them life. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember all that. Um, so, yes, I guess those guys. Um, I don't, you know, because uh, uh, Helen Oxenbury, who I've been very lucky enough to work yes, with. Yes, you have, yeah. Um, she was, she's her after after that, you know, I didn't see. And, and Very Hungry Caterpillar is, I suppose that is sort of my... Time just about is it is it sixty nine? I'm so not I, quite sure, but I know it's celebrated its fifty year. Okay. Oh well, in that so. case, it would have been a book that was around. And um, uh, Dr. Seuss, I remember yeah, him a lot, brilliant. and Richard Scarry. So we had American friends growing up, and and I remember inheriting a lot of Dr. Seuss and Richard Scarry and all that. Um, somebody told me a story about them once that they they were both published by the same publisher, Richard Scarry and Dr. Seuss, oh, right, and okay. they hated each other. And so whenever Scandal. one of them went to the publisher, this may not be true, but they're both dead, so I can't libel them. When one of them went to the publisher, all of the other <clears> person's <throat> books were removed so they wouldn't make this per this famous person very unhappy. And they, wow. they were all of their books put in. But one time they did it and they got it the wrong way around. So it was either Richard Scarry went and it was all Dr. Seuss, or Dr. Seuss went it was all Richard Scarry. Um, and I don't know why. But I dare say it wasn't very nice. Oh, I wonder if I'll turn yeah. into one of those kind of authors. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Yes, it's me about too. time. Come on, a why diva. not? Oh, yes, absolutely. I think um, so. We need to wrap up soon, but oh, um, what do you think? That was quite high pitch for my <laughs> <book>. <laughs> Bring it back down to earth. What do you think makes a strong and good picture book today? Oh, my goodness me. Uh, well, a story, basically, story, or story mm -hmm. and a visual world that not only matches the story but adds something more to it. Whatever it is, it's like it's it's a bit as I, I often say. It's like writing a song. If you write the words, and which I, I do, but you don't write the music. The music is providing so much more, you know, emotion mm. and all that sort of thing. So you have to leave a space for the music to do its job. You can't yeah. do it all. It's the difference between a lyric and a poem that is set to music. A poem is okay on its own; it doesn't need anything else. It does everything for you. You can set it to music if you like, but it doesn't need it. Whereas the picture book text needs. A visual world for it to exist in, for it okay. to come to life in. So I think story. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it. I mean, it can be funny, it can be sad. It doesn't matter about any of that. It's it's just got to be a nice match between the words and the pictures, but a match is, that isn't necessarily obvious. So you know, you can have a contrast between the pictures and the words. You can have happy picture, sad story, or sad mm. story. I don't know. Yeah, sounds great. You can see all. You can you can do that. Um, 
so long as it's, I don't know, it's, there's something about it being alive and you know it when you see it, which isn't very helpful, I'm yeah. afraid, but that's no, it. No, it is, it is very helpful, because I, I agree, that they are a being, because they're red, and they are red yeah. out loud, which yeah. makes them alive. Yes. So I, yeah, I, I absolutely. totally get it. And they're in the imaginative world, hopefully, of the child who is listening to it and looking at the pictures, and hopefully, because that's the great thing about them being so big, is they kind of wrap around your head, especially when your head is that small, and you could, it's like you disappear into them, because yeah. you know, books are like... Um, Doors. I mean, they open like doors. They they literally open like doors. They are literally the same thing. And you open a door to go somewhere else, and you go open a book to go somewhere else. Okay, I've just had an idea for a picture book. As we sat here live on camera. That's my copyright right there. Oh, darn it. Okay. Um, well, I do want to say thank you so, Not so much for thank joining you very me. much. Thank you. No, it, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I do have a little gift for you. My goodness. This is from the lovely guys here at Clean oh, Pros. Wow. A little book to put all oh, your ideas that's in. That's brilliant. And a bag. So thank you oh, so well, much. Thank you, Mio. Thank you so much. And thank you, Clean Pros. Thank you very, very thank much. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for watching this video as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please post a comment, like, subscribe, share it to the world, share it to your friends, and join me again on Gareth's Story Planet. Goodbye. Bye-bye.